not entirely sure our next guest team couldn't give the Niners a game. <laughs> They're running right now. Uh, yeah, six in a row, I think. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I mean, you you have one loss, and it's to Cal, right. who is having a tremendous year. They had college game day. You were at Cal. And then they have just, with really with the exception of, it's funny how it works, with the exception of the team that had no wins, mm-hmm. and that was a, a nail biter. You know, they go to Cal, or they, they Cal Poly comes in, and uh, as, I, as, I, as I asked him, I recall, I said, I had a lot of bad memories of Cal Poly. And uh, <clears throat> I think I think UC Davis just scored. Another. I think Lynn Larison just ran one in five minutes ago. Yeah. Still going, but you put the pass behind you, Jason, and you look ahead. Five games left in the regular season, including the Causeway Classic. Joining us right now, live from Shredville, the mayor of Shredville, Coach Tim Plow. Good morning, Coach. Boys, how we doing? <sighs> well, I didn't throw for four hundred and fifty-eight yards and four touchdowns over the weekend like Miles Hastings, but. I'm doing good. How about you? Oh, it's great, man. It's great. We're uh, on to another week, seeing if we can keep this uh, this train rolling. Jason, how are you doing? I, you know, I answered yeah. for me. I didn't. You, you, yeah, well, I'm good. I'm impressed, Coach, with what you guys are doing. I know we had talked about or You had said, "Look, I, I'm glad with the results. We are winning, but we haven't played our best football." Was this? I mean, the result is a dramatic win, but was this closer to what you wanted to see from your team? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, that was, you know, probably the most proud I've been since, since being in the position, just that I felt like our guys really took uh, ownership of trying to play a complete football game, um, uh, in all of the phases and wasn't perfect by any means, but, uh, but it definitely was more of what I think we're capable of. And that was really cool for those guys. I, I think we really needed that as a team. Um, whether we win or lose, just playing to our potential for a more consistent amount of time. So that was very cool. That's uh, that's so coachy, and I appreciate it because, like, it wasn't <laughs> say it wasn't perfect. Fifty six uh, to fifty six to ten. All right. So Land had a fumble, and uh, let's see, there was a pick, right? Uh, yeah, Land, Land actually, as great as he is, he he threw an interception. I mean, so he's just, he's not perfect. No. So. <laughs> I mean, is Land the Extra problem? Laps for him. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he can do it all. 13 uh, carries, 76 yards, and uh, a couple touchdowns. 90 yards uh, through the air on five catches, and yet another touchdown the offense. But, you know, in all seriousness, you've got to, I, I, you know, we've talked to you enough. It, when it's a tough game, or you know, we talked to you after the Cal game, it's like, okay, we lost, that sucks, but also let's look for positives. And I imagine it's the same thing when, when you've got a blowout win like that. Hey, it's great, we won, proud of you guys, but let's still, let's nitpick if you want. Let's let's try to be as perfect as we can. So what did, other than the turnovers, what, what else troubled you in the game? You know, I think uh, defensively, uh, we gave up some explosive plays, you know, especially in the past game um, with some vertical throws that, I know Coach Coombs was disappointed that we didn't compete better against. And then, uh, you know, I think on offense, just those two drives in the third quarter where we turn the ball over and don't execute, probably lost focus a little bit. Um, and special teams-wise, just a little bit of uh, uh, with our return units not executing the way that we wanted to, uh, a little bit of protection issues on the field goal. Uh, those are probably the things we talked about. And again, every week, we just want to be consistent when we come back as a staff. So we tried to keep Monday, you know, exactly the same as the previous Mondays, which is, Hey guys, here's what we did really well. Here's what we didn't do well. Um, congrats on the win. And now let's get ready for somebody else. Co- uh, Jason, the coach's point here, uh, 52, 42 and 28 yard, uh, completions for Cal Poly, uh, 28 and 23 yard, uh, rushes broke out. So, yeah. Yeah. You, you, a couple you, longer plays. A couple longer plays. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you just said get on to the next team, get on, ready for someone else. I know you really focus on what you guys are doing, but you have to prepare for Eastern Washington, the Inferno, the red turf. That's always a, a unique situation. When you've prepped and looked at game film coach on Eastern, what are some of the areas you go, all right, we need to be good here this week uh, to get a win? This is going to be a tremendous challenge. I mean, these guys have been at the top of the conference for a long time, so dating back to when I – first started coaching in the conference and I know their record um, may not show that, but uh, 
you know, they've had a difficult schedule as well, and they're extremely well coached. I think they're starting to find their stride. Um, you know, they lost a really close game to Montana, who's obviously a really good team. And then they just beat the team across the causeway, who we know is really talented. And they uh, they run the ball extremely well. They're very physical, play multiple quarterbacks. They have maybe the best receiver in the conference. Um, and then defensively, uh, they they do pretty much every single defensive look under the sun. And uh, you're not really going to know what's coming. So you got to more focus on what you're doing, try to stay an attack-minded. They get some free plays on special teams onside kick last week, mm-hmm. you know, so they're going to take, they're going to take risks and, and get some stuff done. And, and obviously you got to go up on the, on the red turf where, you know, it's been a difficult place for big sky teams to go win um, from my time at Davis before to when I was at NAU to back at Davis. Now, you know, if you, if you want to win the conference, that's probably a place you have to win some games. And, uh, and so we know it's going to be a tremendous challenge. 52-49, by the way, that Montana game you were talking about. And uh, Montana currently ranked number 11, 5, and 2. So, obviously, you know they can they, – they, they have the ability uh, to throw up points. You were talking about some of the defensive issues. So, it, it, with them, are they – you know, you, you've been scouting them. Are, are, are they, they – it doesn't sound like they're four yards in a cloud of dust. Is this an aerial attack? What, what are the big offensive strengths you're seeing for them? Yeah, I think – in the past, they were, if, you know, they had been the best, or one of, if not the best passing teams, you know, when they had guys like Kendrick Bourne and Cooper Cup and mm. all those guys. You know, this year it's a little bit different. They they do have a great receiver, um, but they really run the ball extremely well. They got a real physical offensive line, good tailbacks, and then they play multiple quarterbacks that can run the ball. Um, so I think – they're a little bit more balanced than they have been in the past and then definitely extremely physical. Coach Best, their head coach, is an offensive line guy, so they, they do a great job up front. Um, so I think what they've really done is become really physical offensively. They move the ball consistently against everybody, and they control the game. They kind of control the flow of the game that way. So if you don't if you don't score points and you don't get a lead, kind of the way Montana did, um, it's going to be tough for you to come from behind because uh, they're going to control the clock really well. Coach, you talked about their two quarterbacks watching them last week. They kind of they do shuffle them in kind of quickly between plays. It's it, it's you know you, you've seen that before. But what's the prep for your defense to know? Okay, you know um, Taylor's in, Vespera's in. Like to to look at the two different QBs to know who's in. What what are your triggers there to get your defense ready for that? Yeah, I mean we we try to train them during the week. Um, you know, during the scout team, with having guys wearing different jerseys and just making sure they're clued into you know the the keys for them to be successful. They got to communicate at a really high level, and they got to communicate really quickly. Knowing that defensively, you're going to have a different call for every time there's a new quarterback in the game. We you know, started that week one against Cal when they were playing their two guys. Like, hey, when this guy's in. Here's the calls we're going to have when this guy's in. Here's the calls we're going to have. And they've got to almost anticipate what comes in from Coach Coombs before it comes uh, based on who's standing behind center. So it does create a lot of gymnastics uh, and a lot of communication. And that's something we're working really hard on uh, this week in practice. Coach, I, I know, of course, you're, you're, you're focused on – your your game against Eastern Washington. You guys kick off at four. What happens at five is number one South Dakota State versus number two North Dakota State in the Battle of I don't know Dakota I guess whatever <laughs> the, the Mount Rushmore Classic whatever the hell they call it. it, it, it these are two teams obviously number one and number two rivalry the whole thing. Do you do you anticipate wrapping your game up? It's a home game as well, and then. Uh, or excuse me, you know, you're at Eastern Washington. I apologize. And then uh, are you going to keep tabs on that game at all afterwards, or do you just kind of tune it out? Honestly, I'm embarrassed to say I had no clue they were playing each other <laughs> until, you just, until you just said that. That's focus, you're baby. In. Yeah, but I will say that, you know, I'm sure the guys will be, um, you know, tuning into that while we're on the plane or something, uh, you know, or sitting on the bus heading to the airport after the game. Um but uh, but yeah, other other than uh, other than some scoreboard watching, maybe at the end of the of the night, I I had no clue they were playing. But I will say that uh, right now, you know that that is the they are the the class of FCS. I mean, those two programs are uh, extremely impressive. And and when I 
you know, became a head coach the year before I took a trip out to North Dakota state with my good friend, uh, David Braun, who's now the head coach at Northwestern was the D coordinator there. And I knew one day I was going to try to be the head coach here. And I went out to North Dakota state and just hung out for a couple of days, uh, just trying to see what, what they do that makes them, you know, the program they've become. And um, I walked out of there in awe, you know, just seeing how special of a place that is. I know South Dakota State's, you know, almost passed them up recently. So uh, that is, that is, if you want to do something special, you got to be able to hang with those two teams. That's for sure. Just so you know, by the way, just a programming note, since we, we just broke that news to you, it's, it's, it's on ESPN too. So you got, oh, I think yeah. <laughs> you or somebody's got to have YouTube TV or whatever on your phone. So you guys should have time before you get on the plane to pull that sucker up. And uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't even know who you root for, but I maybe they both lose. They tie. You can't <laughs> Ran them both. Yeah, well, I was going to say, is that possible for both of them to lose? Because yeah. that would be, that would be rad beef pulling. <laughs> and then coach, after this week, I know we'll talk to you next week, but you'll finally get to that buy. Like, I, I don't know if that's where you want it. It's the reality of where the schedule is, but you guys have been on such a nice roll, but I'm sure it'll be nice to have you know, kind of a regroup week next week to get you ready for that last push. Yeah, I think it's always debated as coaches. Like, man, when is a good time to have the bye? For us, I do think it would come at a really nice time. We got, you know, about seven to ten guys that have been unable to play for a majority of the season um, that are guys that could really help us. And I think we're going to get a lot of those guys back after the bye. So if we can figure out a way to keep this thing rolling um, up in Cheney this weekend, it'll really feel good getting back on that plane. Like we kind of reached that, that one little, uh, you know, part of the mountain climb, like, Hey, now we can, you know, put up our tent, maybe take a good night's sleep real quick here before we try to get to the top of this thing. And, and, uh, hopefully after that, get, get a handful of these guys back, especially defensively. That would really, really help us. Last thing for you, coach, uh, both my best friend growing up and my cousin, Gabrielle went to uh, Washington state university over there in Pullman. And, uh, I was about, 13 they're both older and uh, or my cousin is when i was visiting her i was about 13 years old and uh, i was that first and only time i've ever been on the pullman campus and uh, we went out we just kind of wanted to see what was going on in the area and uh, i remember walking down the main road and i had a backpack with a bunch of my stuff in there and i bought some things with my car wash money to bring back for my mom and dad as gifts and before i knew it I got hit in the back of the head, and when I came to, the backpack was gone. All the stuff was gone, and I had a, a post-it on my face that said, Ha ha, got you, sucker. And that was in uh, Cheney, Washington, the uh, the home of Eastern Washington. The guy, his name was Noah Showalter, who was a descendant of the founder of uh, Eastern Washington University. So, I, look, I know you don't need extra motivation. I know you don't need bulletin board material, but I've wanted revenge on those people my entire life, and you guys have the opportunity to – to get some of that revenge for me this weekend. Gosh, as usual, you do a great job of just getting the blood pumping <laughs> on a Wednesday morning, getting us really fired up for this game. Uh, that is exactly what we need. That's so I'm right. sure I'll tell the team that. Like, hey, let's defend, <laughs> let's defend his honor, and let's yeah. get this, let's get this done right before kickoff. Right before kickoff. Yeah. yeah. Hey, real quick, guys. Yes, sir. So, if you weren't aware, this happened. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Maybe yeah, I'll put, I'll send you a little picture of me as a twelve year old. You know, so they can visualize <laughs> it. Uh, coach, you're on a roll. Let's uh, let's keep that going. And uh, fingers crossed, things are starting to get real, real exciting for you. Good luck this weekend. Travel safe there and back. And uh, we'll talk to you from Shredville next week. Guys, I appreciate it as usual. Find some joy this week. You got it, Coach. Thank you. That is Coach Tim Plow. Always a pleasure to. Can, can I say? Can I say these something speeches? Because, you're helping him. I just. No offense to anybody else, love them all. I think I think maybe my favorite coach to to ever to talk to. Uh, he's he's a blast. He, he's, he's using your your information as motivational. You're damn right. We'll take a break when we come back. Just a two minute break. Kings fall to the Jazz, zero and four. And what what the hell is going on with the TV? We'll talk about that next. <laughs> 